Well, we're in the northeast of England. Where else could we be with a reception like this? I've always said it. This is, without doubt, the friendliest part of England. It always has been, and I believe that it always will be. But it's a part of England that, ever since the end of the First World War, has been pretty rock-solid Labour. Labour through generations. And I think the Labour Party began to take the North East for granted. You know, they put a Miller band in South Shields, somebody with absolutely no connection to the area at all. Mr Blair, of course, was the MP for Sedgefield for many, many years. And really, I mean, top of the pops, in terms of Labour taking the mickey, was Peter Mandelson was put into Hartlepool. I mean, you couldn't make it up. And actually, I think the people of the North East began to feel they were being taken for granted. I think they began to feel that the attitudes and views of those in London were very different to their own. No more so, of course, than when it came to the Brexit vote, where Labour found themselves hopelessly adrift from many of their voters. As a result of that, in the 2019 general election, Boris Johnson, who was then very popular, not quite so much these days, I don't think, <laughs> But suddenly, we finish up in the North East with Labour having 18 seats, but the Conservatives having 11. There's going to be a general election next year. Can the Conservatives hold on to those seats, or are the pollsters right in thinking nearly all of them could swing back to the Labour Party? Well, none of us know the answers to that, but one man who is a proper North Easter, grew up in Consit, was a young Liberal until he had his Damascene conversion and became a Brexiteer, is Darren Grimes, who's now also, of course, a presenter on GB News. You make that commute down to London to do it. And you've got a new show starting with this in a couple of weeks' time. Absolutely. Well, this Saturday, actually, at 8 o'clock. It's going to be called The Saturday Five, and we're going to discuss the craziest stories of the week as a panel left and right and debate the issues of the day, Nigel, so I cannot wait to get stuck in. Well, good luck with that. I have to say, if you want crazy stories, all you need is the truth. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it really it's isn't everywhere. very difficult. <laughs> I mean, today we had Keir Starmer saying he's going to halve violent crime against women and girls and do all these amazing things. This, the same Keir Starmer, who signed a letter to stop 50 Jamaican criminals from being deported, seven of whom re-offended. I mean, Darren, I think that confidence in both of the parties has really sunk over the course of the last few years. But you're a North East lad. A lot of these constituencies, I mean, take Bishop Auckland in County mm -hmm. Durham, seats that the Conservatives had never won before, are they going to lose them all? Do you know, it's interesting, because, Nigel, I actually put you as the, the bellwether of how I knew that seats in the North East were going to change, because when all of my family really started to vote UKIP, right, and they started to say, look, UKIP's for me, it's the first time that a tribally Labour family, and it's not just isolated to the family, I'm sure there are many Labour, yeah. former Labour voters or current here today. And then suddenly, you know, people start asking questions. Why am I being taxed so highly only to be given it back in, ta in benefits and all the rest of it, when actually reforming the system to say, you keep more of your own money. People thought, well, I quite like those ideas, actually, of not getting it back yeah. from the state and actually keeping more of my own money. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, I was the gateway drug. You were, in a totally, sense. totally. You know, people left Labour and they found it quite easy on that basis to vote for Boris. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but I see a lot of issues here that really interest me. If you look at the newspapers, the ULES extension, Mayor Khan's ULES extension, huge coverage in the newspapers. What nobody ever talks about is the fact that these charging schemes, these congestion zones, is happening here in Newcastle and Gateshead too, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I've heard from people saying, I'm really worried about the fact that Newcastle is going to be decimated by these charges, where drivers just say, I cannot afford to come through to Newcastle. So people start going to the metro centre and other places, which is a big shopping centre. And I think that's going to have real consequences in people's pockets. Now, these people aren't rich, right? If you're driving a taxi or a heavy goods vehicle, yeah. or you're a, not... Or a delivery van. Absolutely, or, yeah, whatever yeah. it might be. And they're talking about the expansion of these schemes because, Nigel, you know as well as I do, once a, a council starts to realise it can make money from pinching from people's pockets, they don't stop doing it, right? No. They like to expand it <coughs> to get as much as they possibly can. That would be ruinous for the North East. At a time when we're seeing investment come through, the North East is actually doing all well, right as far so, as investment's concerned. So levelling up 
this phrase, levelling up, that Michael Gove and Boris use. I've been struggling to work out what levelling up actually means. A bit of audience reaction. How many people here know what levelling up actually means? Good. It's not just me, then. <laughs> I mean, the, these bizarre sort of academic phrases. But you're saying money is coming into the north. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, so what, government money or private money? Well, it's, act it's taxpayer money, ultimately, yes. Yeah. And I think Liz Truss actually had the right idea, Nigel, where she was proposing actually there would be investment zones where private money would come in, because ultimately that's what's going to create jobs for people in this region. And people cry out, you know, I've got two brothers, one of them works in a factory, one one of them works in retail in the northeast. They're crying out for uh, higher paid jobs and opportunities. So many, that you hear that ad nauseum up here in the northeast. So but we really the, need to unleash the private sector. Don't you, think, don't you think the truth of it is that the northeast is still a bit ignored by London? Oh, absolutely. Well, you've just hit the nail on the head there when you said that the clean air zones yeah. that are yeah. taking place in here aren't discussed in Westminster yeah. whatsoever. Because yeah. what happens to the northeast? doesn't matter ultimately because the politicians don't spend no. most of their time in no. the northeast of England. A few months ago, I was in Sunderland. Now, whether I'm allowed to say that here, I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> but it was really interesting just talking to folk. They were so angry that the social housing waiting list was as long as it was. Their kids and grandkids can't get homes, can't get on the ladder in any way at all. And yet they were seeing Sunderland. You know, lots and lots of migrant hotels, young men that mm -hmm. across the channel. It's the same here in Newcastle, isn't it? It is, absolutely, and County Durham. I mean, County Durham's building a, a, opening a new detention centre for migrants to actually hold migrants. I mean, there are countless numbers. You know, you walk around Newcastle and see the homelessness, frankly, on the streets of Newcastle, and you think, what are we doing for our our own people up here, as opposed to those who are illegally entering Britain. I think it's a damn disgrace, to be honest with you, Nigel, and I'm pretty certain that most of the people in the northeast of England hold that view. Hard-working people that go out and have to spend so much of their own cash in taxes just to fund hotels yeah, for mean, those that come here illegally. This. It's not on. <laughs> Final thought. Final thought. In 2004, there was a referendum in the North East as to whether to have a North East Assembly, a North East Parliament, effectively. And the people of the North East said to the people in London, well, I won't actually say what they said, but I think you know <laughs> what the message was. Yet now, the Conservatives are going to bring in a super mayor for the whole of the North East. None of these people have been asked about that. Yep, I agree with that. But four billion quid in extra taxpayer cash for the region to actually uh, connectivity, for example. You come from my part of County Durham and try yeah. to get into Newcastle. If you don't drive, Nigel, well, you're up a creek without a well, paddle. That's all I can well, say. Well, I tell you what, the North East will get its men. We well, need the money, we need it, the investment. Whether it gets its four billion quid, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs>